dancing can solve any problem in the world. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. I know. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. Well, he had some problems to well, himself, but, uh, you know, listen, what the heck? And look where he, he is. The guy sure did, you know, he sure could move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> taught, mm -hmm. the, taught the world how to move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm expecting to see Pamela on this on this workshop today. I, 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 I told her she had to go. Did you see her, her post? She posted about her husband, Eric. I don't know. Yes. Yes. And she did. She <laughs> asked me for the link. So I sent oh, okay, it to good. her. So, yeah. And, uh, and uh, I, Alan, I don't know if you remember Eleanor Casimir. Was she's a ethical member? Was she moved out to Washington State? <clears throat> no, I don't know if I knew her. Uh, well, you might recognize her when she she said she was going to try to join too. So beautiful. So hopefully, I don't know how long I'm staying. That's the only thing. I'm supposed oh. to go out for a walk around Rockland Lake, so I gotta I gotta check in with Steph at two, see what we're doing. Rockland Lake's. Well, what time does this go to? It's really gonna be about an hour. Okay. Maybe a little longer, but yeah, we usually get an hour, hour and fifteen. I mean, mm -hmm. it can can go all the way up to three, uh, like when you were doing, uh, I think, pies. <laughs> that was a good one. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, and I'll <laughs> also uh, mention, Lauren, you know, you had at one point in the past, you had given a little uh, plug for the um, uh, Roots Cafe, mm -hmm. right? The food truck. Yeah. And, which is right on my, it's right on my commute to work. Oh man, you gotta go. Uh, well, I've been stopping by there like, you know, on a regular basis. And, um, and I went there, I got a funny, I got I'm going to share a little story while we, while we're waiting for other people to, uh, to arrive. Okay. Um, so I went there uh, for Lisa's birthday. I said, listen, I, I want, you know, just a small birthday cake. Nice. You know, obviously vegan. I want a small birthday cake. Um, for like three people, so maybe four people to share, you know, um, and uh, and you know it was late notice. They said, "Yeah, we get what we we'll get. We get you one tomorrow." So I come back the next day, and they've got this birthday cake, and it's like it's enough to feed forty people. Uh huh. I'm still. We're still trying to get through it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was like, "Wow, this is like," but it was delicious, and I'm really uh -huh. grateful that you turned me on to them uh because it's a fun place and nice people Wait, and really are they good orange they the ones in orangeburg uh they're like in montvale i think oh uh, new jersey or Grant yeah montvale? new jersey yeah they're just past spark hill oh wait roots it's called roots roots cafe mm -hmm. uh, wait, is we it near Wegmans? it's in a little shopping area no, no. no. okay i'm thinking i'm thinking of beats a place called beats sorry yeah you know where the uh, you know where the old uh, like seventeen seventy six cafe or seventeen seventy six restaurant is? I remember, right? Okay. Yeah, it's it's just a food truck around the back of an office okay. park. Okay, all right. But they've got the place. It's I I went there on a Friday night once. They have live music. They got. I mean, it's it's a great time. We'll have to go there one of these days, Alan. Love it. Yeah, we still we still have to go to. Uh, uh, sweetgrass. Sweetgrass. You bet. You bet. Let's do that this week. All right. I mean, if you can. Okay. So All right, good. Yeah, oh, good. We got the out. whole social calendar worked out here. <laughs> <laughs> I see we've got one thirty-five. Okay. Uh, I know. I know there are. As I say, I know that uh, Eleanor was going to uh, be joining. At least she said she was. I'm trying to see. I just want to check my email. Yeah. Uh, let me do. And, and see if anyone else has specifically requested the link. Okay. I just had my smoothie. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, I consider my smoothie just my, <clears throat> my way of getting spirulina every day. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my only, that's my, that's my reason for my smoothie. <laughs> yeah, sure. That's your reason? Yes, I love spirulina. I don't love it, but I know that it really helps with my energy levels. 
so I put it in my smoothie also. That's, that's an acquired taste. Yes, it is. What's it called again? I'm sorry. Spirulina. 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 All right. So I'm hoping that I don't see any of the people that I sent the link to. Same uh, here. And I'm, yeah. and I'm hoping that I had the right link because I took it right off. Well, I, I used it. I It's what got me on. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, can I just ask, what brand spirulina do you use? It's uh, called, oh, well, I use Hawaiian. <clears throat> it's, it's called Hawaiian something. Okay, I know that one. I use Health Force Superfoods. Oh, okay. I've seen that too. I've used I've, that too. Yeah, I've used that one too. I honestly think this one came from High Vibe in the city. Oh. Because I don't, I don't, you can order it from High Vibe online and I'm def, I'm sure they have this on Amazon too. Health Force, what is it? Health Force what? Health Force Spirulina Mana. Oh, okay. Thanks. That too. That one's good. Yeah. This one really smells like the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. And there's Sylvia has joined us. Good to see you, Sylvia. Oh. Yeah, good to see your Hi, name. Hi, glad so, I could yeah. be here. <laughs> Hi. And let's see, Lauren, I'm going to spotlight you. Cool. For everyone, because I Thanks. have forgotten to do that in the past. And I am recording to let everyone know. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like I say, I don't know. Uh, I hope uh, that we see Eleanor. Oh, here. Well, I don't know. Hope we see uh, Eleanor. <laughs> And Pamela, come through. But I'll keep an eye on the uh, the waiting room and let people in. Okay. And um, so, yeah, I, if we're ready to go, let's uh, let's get going. Sure. Do you want to do your introduction before we start? Uh, sure. I actually, yeah. Okay. Good. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I should, shouldn't I? All right. Well, let me. Uh, I'm going to unspotlight you That's for the fine. moment. And uh, and uh, just uh, welcome everybody. Hi, we it looks like we have some uh, some new visitors today. Um, this is ethical eating for a healthy and humane people and planet. And that very long title uh, really encapsulates what we're about here. Uh, this is a program of the Ethical Culture Society of Bergen County, the uh, Adult Education and Lifelong Learning Programs, uh, and. Um, so you can find out a little bit more about ethical culture uh, for those of you who might be new to it at ethicalfocus.org. Uh, and um, we welcome you. We look forward to a, a time. We've done these for about two years now on the first Sunday of every month. And uh, it's just been a great experience. Uh, we, it's even greater, I will say, when we can meet in person. And we used to meet at our meeting house in Teaneck, New Jersey. Um, and uh, but with the pandemic, we uh, for a while met outdoors where it was safer to meet. And I'm looking forward, you know, April's coming, maybe May, but one of these months, we're going to get back out there uh, on the front uh, patio in the beautiful sunshine and with the fantastic samples and tastes and flavors, because that is really one of the best parts of this. Someone's mm -hmm. going to invent like a Zoom, you know, like smell a vision or taste a vision on Zoom and that will be totally, that'll be it right there. Um, but until then, we just have to look forward to that time we can all come back. And so without any further ado, um, I want to, um, uh, oh, and uh, to uh, Rhea and Marina, yes, we will always still be Zooming. We Zoom our platforms on Sunday morning. We have a Sunday morning platform. We have a whole variety of activities uh, and really a very wonderful, uh, vibrant community that gets together on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock for a platform and for all kinds of other activities. So I do hope you'll take a look and, and check out the Ethical Culture Society, but we will be Zooming uh, everything forever. That's sort of the decision, I think. And um, you know, even when we're all healthy, we just uh, make sure it's uh, available for everyone who can get there. So without further ado, I will, uh, I'm gonna re-spotlight you, Lauren. Okay. And take it away. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just putting this in the chat now. Oh, hold on. I spelled it wrong. So I have um, a new I have a new website. 
called um, www.lcoconsulting.co. And I wanted to let you know that my new project will be to post the recipes that I demonstrate on my blog for free. So you're going to have access to them. I haven't posted today's recipes, but I'll do that over the course of next week. So you'll have them. You don't have to worry about writing down all the ingredients, but can just enjoy the, the process and ask me any type of questions today, not just about the ingredients or the recipes, uh, but and any any sort of health and fitness or wellness questions. So um, definitely open to that. Just going to take a look here. It looks like we have um, some, some familiar faces from last time. So you all know who I am, Lauren Orlando. I'm a certified vegan health coach, and I love this program. Great, Sylvia. I love this program because I get to really show you uh, a day in the life of what I eat on a regular basis and then also open it up for discussions and dialogue about how to make this lifestyle sustainable. So really excited. Today's theme, uh, we are revisiting the theme from uh, January, which is cleansing, health and wellness, how to keep your, your diet in, in a way where it helps prevent inflammation, helps protect you against getting sick. So a lot of fresh oxygen, a lot of fresh food. So I'm going to be showing you um, my blueberry pie smoothie. And then I'm going to show you how to make almond milk with a juicer, which you could also make in your blender, but I'm going to show you how to do it in a juicer today, which is really fun. And then I also have a butternut squash blender recipe for soup, butternut squash soup, um, blender soup. So that's going to be really nice as well. What we're going to do is we're going to put that fresh almond milk in the butternut squash soup. A lot of recipes I've seen use avocado, a lot of heavy fats like cashew, but I thought that the almond milk would be really fun today because it gives us an opportunity to have lower fat, lower acidity, but also have that thick, creamy type of texture. So really looking forward to that. It's a great day for soup, and um, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy this recipe. So this blueberry pie smoothie happens to be one of my favorites. It's, it's heavy and sweet, but it also really kind of satisfies that sweet craving if you need to have dessert or you wanna make it into a smoothie bowl and put some little chopped fruits on top, more than welcome to do that as well. I'm on my cell phone today, so I just wanna put this closer to my blender so you can see just exactly how I'm doing this. So I own a Vitamix, but if you have any sort of high-speed blender, this will work. And I've put two cups of water in my blender. And believe it, believe it or not, I couldn't find um, fresh spinach. So I'm going to be using organic frozen spinach instead. And you really want to get just about a cup of this frozen spinach. You don't want it to taste too green, but the idea is to also have all of those nutrients going into your body. You don't need to use spinach. You could also use romaine or baby kale. Arugula would be a little spicy, so you would kind of ruin the, uh, the flavor profile. We want it to be sweet, but um, any, anything will do. I will say this, if you're going to use kale, you should stick to the baby kale. And the reason being is that the baby kale is a lot more mild. It's not so overpowering. And sometimes I find that, depending on your blender, if you use regular kale, especially with those stems, they don't tend to blend well and the textures are kind of off-putting. And I want you to enjoy your green smoothies, not dread them. So we're going to do this today. All right. So next, so I have about a cup and a quarter here because of just the chunks that came out of the bag and around just like floating around there like a little terrarium, but that's okay. And I'm going to put in a ripe organic banana, just one. Okay, great. Put this peel in my little dump cup that I have on the side and one cup of frozen organic blueberries. So a few months back, maybe half a year ago, when we had a, an outside demo, I've done my blueberry banana pie. This kind of has that same type of flavor because you have the banana and the blueberry makes it very sweet. Now, this is called improvising, right? So what I would put in here next are some dates, but I didn't have dates. I have these date rolls 
which can substitute and because they have a little bit of coconut, a little bit of fat might make it taste a little bit more rich. So I'm going to put three of these in here. They're a little stuck together, but I had them for an occasion and because of COVID, I don't have many occasions anymore. So they'll be used in my smoothie instead. So I just put three of these. If you're not using, I'm sorry, my, my bird is really excited today. His name's Milo. Um, if you don't have these, then you'll just put three Mejul dates or four to six of the Deglet Nord dates, just about a handful, okay, of dates. So I'll put these to the side here. And last but not least, a dash of cinnamon really gives it that type of desserty pie flavor here. Okay, that's it. And that's the smoothie. Super simple and super delicious. Put it over, put it in my Vitamix here. So let's see. Bring my book. I'll bring my Vitamix to you instead of walking you all the way over to the other side of the kitchen. Has anybody been trying any of, any of the recipes? I know that Sylvia tried the chocolate tart, the chocolate avocado tart. Can you give me water? It was amazing. I loved it. And my son's uh, girlfriend, Raina, who's vegan, was raised vegan, said it was good. So <laughs> nice. take that as someone who really knows what she's talking about. It was delicious. Great. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? I know that um, Marina tried the uh, juice that I did. It was the uh, romaine and carrot <laughs> juice that I made uh, a yes. few months back. I yes. loved it. I was drinking it every day for a while, but now I'm getting a little tired of it, so I can switch it up with this. Okay, yeah, I think so. I think so. And you made it in your blender, right? And you just used a nut milk bag to drain it out? Just the, just Vitamix. <laughs> I drank the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it didn't taste too uh, pulpy didn't taste too chewy it was a little pulpy but it was all good like I added water to it mm. but it was all good like I just shook it up and it was good I loved it excellent good very good all right just making sure we're all paying attention because I am going to invite you to a potluck sometime this year as long as we're okay to, to meet in person and I will ask you to bring one recipe that you learned if you've been attending regularly start you know we can start taking notes but again, I am going to help you out by opening up my blog again on my website so you have an opportunity to, to use those recipes as well. But I think it'll be really fun for us to meet in person and to each bring a dish, uh, maybe something you were inspired to, to make based on the recipes or just one of the recipes I've, I've demonstrated. So anyway, without further ado, here's the smoothie. And I'm just going to put it on the smoothie function. It's a 50, 50 second high speed blend. <laughs> All right, and there it is. Okay, you have to really blend it. So if you don't have a Vitamix or a smoothie function, you really should blend it for up to 50 seconds or so high speed because we put those chunky coconut date rolls in here. And we also use the frozen spinach instead of the fresh spinach. So we take the time to blend it well. And here's our delicious blueberry pie smoothie. I like to put it, I like to elevate it a little bit and put it in a nice glass. Um, since I was, since I moved into my house, I had to really think about entertaining and how to make raw foods delicious and vegan food look delicious and beautiful and elevated. So people were open to trying them instead of just being a little off put or freaked out that it was extremely healthy food for a gathering. So I like to use nice glasses like this. I'm going to be putting of my frozen blueberries right on top. 
motion on the top here. And I'll just put a, you could, you could even put some shredded coconut on here as well, but I'm gonna put some cinnamon. Okay, Milo, thank you. You wanna say hi to everyone? Oh, yes. And there we go, there it is. So I'll bring my phone over so you can see it. Whoops, can you see it? There it is, this beautiful blueberry pie smoothie, delicious and Mm. I'm so sad you're missing out on it because it's really, really, really good. So definitely recommend it. Definitely beautiful. You can serve this even um, at a brunch if you wanted to, or even as um, on a beautiful dessert table. If you have like a nice fruit platter you wanted to have, and then have some of these on the side, you can also alternate with other smoothie flavors as well. So good, so delicious. So let me just pour the rest of this in a cup. I'll use my husband's Star Wars mug here and I'll put this in the refrigerator for later as well. It's, it's really that cinnamon that gives it that, I don't know, that dessert type of flavor. It really brings out all of the sweetness of the berries without having to just put so much fruit in it. So only one banana, one cup of frozen blueberries and a little bit of that cinnamon. Don't forget the juice and the dates as well. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge here. Welcome, Andrea. Glad you joined us. That's that's the what you hear in the background is, is Lauren's uh, bird, just in yes. case you thought it was your computer. <laughs> no, thank, thank you. No, I figured that out. Sorry, I'm so sorry I'm late. I... <laughs> Not that's at all, okay. glad you could join us. That's okay, yes. So. I'm gonna just rinse out my blender now because I'm gonna use it to make our soup. What I love about blender soups is that they are extremely easy to make. You don't need to have a fancy blender. You can make it in a regular blender and just blend it on high for a minute or two so that the heat of the blades actually naturally heats it up without destroying any of the live active enzymes in the food you're putting in there. Um, what I also like about it is, again, you can elevate it to an experience. So you can pour your raw soup out and then have a toppings bar and also put toppings on that as well. So now I'm going to move you over to my juicer. I'll unplug my laptop here. Just come on, coming over to my juicer setup. I think you can see it okay. Let me move my ingredients for the soup over here. Milo. Okay, can we see okay? I think we can see the juicer okay. Beautiful. So what I've done first was actually uh, soak the almonds in purified water for about six hours in my refrigerator. And then I made sure to rinse them really well so that the the coating, there's an acid in nuts and fruits. So what I want to do is remove that so that they blend well, but also so that I get the most nutrients out of the nuts without that phytic acid around them. So I'm gonna put these in to my juicer. I'm gonna just bring the computer up so you can see what I'm doing here. There you go, cool. So almonds and what we need is also a cup of water. Has anybody has anybody made homemade nut milk before? In a I've juicer? made it in, in the Vitamix, but I've never made it in a juicer. Yeah. Oh. Great. Same. I've used the Vitamix. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I don't. I don't have a high speed blender. I think no. I didn't make uh, nut milk. I made oat milk before. Ooh. That must be delicious. Oh yeah, it's so super easy too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, the first time I made almond milk in my juicer and I actually had a taste a, a taste of it, I was actually um, disappointed in the store-bought version because I realized that the store-bought version must be extremely watered down because I have two cups of almonds here and it's gonna probably give me 16 ounces of really rich almond milk. But if you think about it, 
when you go to the grocery store, they're probably only using a quarter cup for like a half gallon, like a quarter cup of almonds for a half gallon. It's so watered down. So I thought, okay, well, at least there's not no extra, uh, there aren't any extra ingredients. And it's also a lot more rich and delicious. So um, if you don't have a juicer and you use your high speed blender, the same process applies. You're gonna put your 16 ounces of water in your high speed blender along with your almonds. Sometimes people, if you would like it sweet, you could also add dates to your blender. And then when you're done blending, you would put your nut milk bag over a pot, okay? to keep it open and you would just pour out the blended up almonds and water into the nut milk bag and then just squeeze it, okay? Squeeze it over a pot, okay? So it captures all the liquid and then use transfer the pot of almond milk to either a pitcher um, or just put, put a lid on it, put it in the refrigerator. You know, we have a vessel, just use it, okay? <laughs> I've also made salad in, in uh, like mixing bowls and it just, left them in the refrigerator, you know? Just just use it. No rules here. It's COVID, no rules. Anyway. What, what kind of juicer is that, please? That's the Omega, this, right? That this an is omega? an Omega, an Omega, omega okay. juicer. Yeah, and uh, the model has a lot of letters and numbers in it, and quite honestly, it's hard for me to keep track of what they are. Um, but let's see, I, I, will, I will say this, that, this juicer is the only one, this is the only Omega juicer that they sell at Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, and it's usually in the price range of 250, sometimes it's on sale for 230. And then of course you bring your 20% off coupon and they do apply to the juicer last I checked. So um, one of the things that um, I wanna say about the juicer, and I did mention this about the Vitamix as well, is that it's, it's, it's kind of like a one-time purchase because if something breaks, they typically, they typically send it, you know, they'll send you a replacement part. It takes a, it takes a lot to break this thing. I have shoved in, you know, carrots, nuts, seeds, um, potato, anything. Um, and it, and it works really, really well. The, the uh, motor is extremely, uh, strong, powerful. It's also a slow masticating juicer. So, um, there, and you want that because you want less heat. It, it, it juices the, anything you put in here at a very slow pace, just kind of squeezes the juice out rather than shredding everything up with a high, a high fast um, blade like we're going to see in the Vitamix, you want to keep everything kind of cool. So it kind of retains all of the natural enzymes. That's the reason why we juice. A lot of people say, oh, well, we shouldn't have juice because the fiber isn't attached to it. So juicing is kind of like taking a vitamin. It's like, it's a, just a straight shot of nutrients. So you want to retain as many nutrients as possible. So you want a slow masticating juicer. So if you don't have a juicer, if it's in your budget, I'm telling you, it, it's usually a one-time purchase. If you take really good care of it, you rinse it, clean it right away when you're done using it. Um, I've had this one now for over four years and it, it's pretty, uh, pretty reliable. I just rinse it after I use it and it's really low maintenance. It's also a horizontal juicer. They do sell this same model vertical juicer, um, but I'm just so used to having my pulp container right here and I can manage it uh, really, really well. And I, and I have an extra cart for uh, counter space. So maybe counter space could also be a reason to have a vertical juicer, but I, I like this horizontal Omega juicer. Can I comment on the vertical? I have the horizontal and I bought the vertical at one point to try it and it was a horror. It was very difficult to clean. It used to get clogged. It, this is so easy compared to the other one. I returned it and that was the end of that. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would assume that um, because this is, whoops, because this is a horizontal juicer, the only place that captures pulp and uh, any discarded material would be here in the neck and then also down here. But if you have a vertical juicer, everything is flipped uh, to be straight up and down. So in the bottom, you'll probably, you know, in this part, you'll also have things to clean. So I hear you on that. As long as you have a counter space, it might be better to have um, a horizontal juicer. But having a juicer and having a Vitamix are not requirements for a healthy lifestyle. But I just thought it'd be fun for us to kind of see how to make juice, basically almond juice in your juicer. But you could also do the same thing in your high-speed blender or Vitamix as well. So, um, all right. So, 
the way that we do this is as the almonds are kind of going through the top here and they're processing, you add a little bit of water for two reasons. Number one, if you don't, the almond uh, extraction, if you will, it looks a lot like a heavy cream and it gets stuck on the top here. It actually doesn't filter through to the bottom. So I am gonna put in almonds and then also alternate with a little bit of water so that they can just kind of go through this little strainer part and I get almond milk. So wish me luck, here we go. I have to find the on switch, that would be, there we go, the first step. So I'm gonna put the almonds in, the top here, just really a, like a half handful at a time. And then I'm gonna alternate with a little bit of water right through the top here. Then you can see this almond meal kind of coming out and I've used this to make uh, cookies and breads because it's just, it's like a nice sticky almond meal, it's great. Still has the moisture in it. Okay. I'm gonna alternate, add the water. Lauren, that was two cups soaked almonds that you're using? Yes, yes. Okay, and this is only 16 ounces of water and I'm just putting in a little bit of water at a time as the almonds are processing. And so as you can see, some of this, it's really thick and creamy, okay? See that accumulating on the top here? It's really thick and creamy. So give it a shake or add some water through the top so that it kind of starts to, to drip down a little bit. It'll get stuck. All right, so you just have to be patient with it. Again, it's not rock, it's raw food, it's not rock and science though. You'll find your pattern, you'll find what works best. And you can see that the almond milk is accumulating here at the bottom. It's extremely rich. It tastes like very, very, very sweet almonds because you're not really adding, adding anything to it other than the water. Oh, I got my phone wet. Hold on. There we go. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay. Perfect. So I'm just going to- like when my mom used to wipe my face with her apron. <laughs> oh, she did. <laughs> I had to improvise. I didn't have a towel or anything. That's funny. I've got a slow masticating uh, juicer that's manual. It's a Mueller. You, you crank it. And it's like the best investment. It was $20 and it makes the best juice. Do you think I can do that? This and there? I don't It's slow masticating. That. Okay. Okay. Because uh, yeah, it, it does some... Go ahead. Instead of soaking the almonds for six hours, I would recommend soaking the almonds overnight. Okay. So maybe like the 10 or 12 hour mark. It'll make them okay. even softer. Just and then just a little bit at a time, just to see how it handles it. But I don't see right. why not. Right, yeah. right. Because there's there's nothing mechanical. I mean, it's it's all manual, and right. so um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Good question. Okay, it looks like we're getting to the end of this. I finished my 16 ounces of water, two cups. So this is a little trick I have. So you see that we have the almond milk. Oops. We have the almond milk here. And then this is of course the pulp. So what I do is I quickly kind of switch out the liquid part and put the pulp tray underneath just to kind of catch any stray drips. So just a little, just a little juicer trick for you. And check out this delicious almond milk we just made. Holy macaroni. This is so delicious and so rich. I have been using, I'll show you what I've been using. Hold on, hold on. Uh, okay, so I used to be literally addicted to this. And there's nothing wrong with it. These are nut pods, okay? Because I always needed some sort of creamer in my tea or my decaf coffee. So now instead of buying something that has I don't know, natural flavors, acadio gum, dipo, potassium, phosphate, sunflower lecithin, uh, gel and gum, 
now I'm just having almonds and water and it's just as rich and just as delicious. You could even water this down even more and probably get double the amount of volume, but I want it to be rich today for our soup. So I highly recommend doing this. Um, if, you, if you're committed and you would like to spend the time, I think it's so worth it instead of having things that I can't pronounce. Um, but if you're on your way to a plant-based lifestyle because of your ethical reasons and, you, and you're not sure where to start, by all means, buy this, okay? This, this is your transition, but hopefully we can get into the practice of making fresh foods, unadulterated foods, just with whole natural ingredients. Okay, enough with that. It was extremely exciting for me to talk to you about uh, juicing almonds, but I'm gonna bring you back to my counter space here so we can finish off this delicious soup. Okay. Um, so any questions so far before I move into the last kind of section of our, our demo today? Any thoughts or questions? We can open it up for questions at the end as well. I'll look at the chat, but anybody have anything? Well, just one comment, uh, just I, not as being lazy or anything, but being lazy, rather than use the juicer, if we're gonna use the Vitamix, we could just use the Vitamix for the almond milk, right? Or yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. So what you would do is still do the same thing. Soak the almonds for at least six hours, okay? And then from there, what you'll do is you'll rinse them really well and then add those almonds and your 16 ounces of, of water in your Vitamix. And what's gonna happen is it's just gonna, it won't be um, completely filtered. It'll be a little chunky. You could use it, especially if you're just gonna dump it into let's say a cereal or an oatmeal. But if you wanted it to be thin and the same consistency of an almond cream or an almond milk, then you would pour it in your nut bag, okay? Um, and it's just, and then, sh and just wring it out, strain it out and then transfer it to a pitcher or just put the whole thing in your refrigerator. <laughs> Because that's my lazy way. Just put it in the refrigerator. It's just my, myself and my husband here in this house. So, uh, you know, I, for example, I'm like, uh, I demo demonstrated my kelp noodle recipe two weeks back and I'm soaking them in a saucepan with no intent to cook them, but that's just the vessel that I had. So go, go crazy and use your creativity um, and try to not have to do a lot of uh, dishes, right? That's also a nice motivator as well. All right, so let's get this all together now. Lauren, then... I have a quick question. Oh, I'm so sorry, go ahead. That's all right. Um, so I'm just uh, curious about um, like converting from weight to cups okay. for almonds. Cause you, almonds usually they sell them, you know in like an eight ounce or a 16 ounce package. Right. So how many cups will you get from a 16 ounce package? A little less than two cups. Um, well, they go, it goes by uh, weight, right? Um, you would really just have to try it out and eyeball it, but I usually get almost two cups out of a 16 ounce package, almost um, a little, a little shy of that. Um, so if you buy a 16 ounce package and just use, maybe, maybe you won't need all of these 16 ounces of water. You might have to just kind of approximate, but you should be okay. The reason why I say this is because I'll show you, I, um, I know I mentioned this brand uh, maybe last time. This is Terrasol, okay, and you can buy it off of Amazon. And this is two pounds. I buy I buy nuts by the pound. Um, I feel like buying it in bulk saves me money and alleviates that anxiety because a lot of my, not a lot, but at least one meal a day will have some sort of nut in it. So I just buy them by the pound and I store them in my freezer. So Terrasol just happens to have a nice, delicious taste, very mellow, not acidic. And these are milk almonds. And uh, I guess what makes them a little different from regular almonds is that they're just like a little bit thinner. So they tend to uh, integrate into a milk uh, better than the regular almonds, but either one of them will work. They just market it this way, okay? Good question, Mel. Thank you. So Lauren, have you made some other nut milks? Say again, I'm sorry. Have you, ma have you made some other nut milks? Because I've made Brazil nut milk. Oh my gosh, that's probably delicious, yes, right? It is delicious, yeah. Um, and I've even had um, met some people who, instead of doing all of this, will just take some water and two tablespoons of almond butter and just blend it up. 
and make almond milk. And I've seen people do that with tahini as well to have like a sesame milk. Mm -hmm. So that's really fun. I've never experimented with that, but it is something kind of uh, interesting to play with if you'd like to go through um, that process as well. So very good. Okay. So I'm going to now take this delicious almond milk. I mean, look at that. When you go to the store and you buy almond milk, I feel like it's a lot lighter in color. And I'm going to put it right into my Vitamix. Okay. And that's showing me two cups actually on the dot, which is great. On the line, not really on the dot. All right. Now in my preparation for today, I went ahead and I chopped up all of our ingredients for our butternut squash soup. So I didn't think you wanted to just sit, sit here and watch me chop. Whoops, lost a carrot there. Okay, so two large carrots, chopped, peeled, chopped. Um, I have three cups of cubed butternut squash fresh. I bought this at Green Life Market out by me, but you could probably find it either in cubes or even spirals at Whole Foods. I know they, they have it there. I have one large apple that I had roughly chopped, core and all, okay, because my Vitamix will be able to handle that. I have three more of these uh, date rolls, <laughs> so three large dates, okay. Um, I have three stalks of scallion, organic scallion, one stalk of organic celery, and I know, I know, I know, I always have to have garlic, so <laughs> one, one clove of garlic, okay. I'm Italian, I can't not have garlic. I, I gave you, I gave you scallion today, but you got, then you have to add the garlic, right? It's like a give and take relationship. So all of these are going to go in here in my Vitamix. Now, one of the things we have to keep in mind is the maximum capacity of this thing. And so what I might do is add half of my ingredients, blend it, and then add the second half. One of the things I want to do first is make sure that I integrate this, uh, this butternut squash cubes into my almond milk. So I'm going to just do that first and make sure that I don't overstrain the blade. And if you have a smaller capacity than a Vitamix, again, maybe you want to do this in thirds, okay? You might even decide you're going to just do one ingredient at a time and then mix them all together. And you can, you know, that'll, that'll work as well. Um, so it looks like I'll be able to get pretty much everything in here for the most part. I'm gonna get these dates in here as well. So this Vitamix can handle a lot, you know, talking about being lazy. I usually can get everything in one go um, without going to the maximum line. Although I think, I think I'm just about there. Uh, you also have the option, fill it to the top and use the tamper. <clears throat> it's just a plastic cylinder thing. It just, it's a plunger that goes through the top. Okay, you could do that as well. And just be patient with it and it'll go, it'll, it'll combine. Looks like I'm going to be able to get everything in here. So let's give it a shot. All right. I cannot wait to eat this. Uh, I think the way that I'm going to have this is um, have a, a nice salad on the side. And uh, I'll show you some of my toppings ideas in a minute. So, all right, let's, let's blend this up and see what we get. This is what you call dead air. That is the quietest Vitamix I've ever not heard. <laughs> I know. Is it really that quiet? No, oh. no. <laughs> 
No, I think when she puts on that blender, is, it cancels everything out. Right. The noise is too much for Zoom, so Zoom cuts out. Sorry, I was a lot of blending. I should have given you a warning, but uh, here it is. Okay. Oh, that looks good. Yum. Thank you. Thank you. It's so super simple. You notice I didn't even add any salt or pepper. Um, typically, I like to just try it the way that it is and then determine later if I need salt or pepper. You might also want to, instead of salt or pepper, what I found is that a good way to substitute salt is use lemon or lime because you get that citrusy bite and it's almost like having the same effect of having salt. So you could do that as well. So here is my beautiful bowl of soup. And like I said, you could make it elevate it, make it really fancy. So I have some of these. This is go raw organic sprouted seed salad toppers. And this just happens to be salt and pepper. So again, I didn't add it, but you know, you can also have that. Um, another raw cracker that I really, really, really like, um, although it does have a little bit of olive oil in it, is uh, Healing Home Foods. Love, love, love their crackers. They have a pizza cracker, it's absolutely addictive. So I don't recommend you have more than one package in your home at a time. And, uh, and maybe you wanna add some snow peas or some sprouts on top as well. So for me, I think I'm just gonna put a couple of sunflower seeds on top here. Oh man, that looks like a cookbook. I'm actually really impressed with this contrast here. Look at this, this is, this is great. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. That looks delicious. Thank you, so I'll do a little taste test here. I'm sure it's delicious, but I wanna make sure that I have enough, uh, the right flavor profile, I guess. Do you ever uh, freeze the sure there's enough garlic? <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's enough garlic. Do you ever freeze the extra? I'm sure you could. Yeah. Because I didn't really use any water. Um, guys and gals, this is fantastic. Yeah. I, I really recommend that you make this. It is on the sweet side, but when people look for butternut squash soup, they want it to kind of have those like sweet, small yeah. type of warming flavors. Mm -hmm. So um, go for it. So it's, is it's the one clove good. enough? One clove's enough. <laughs> I mean, I love garlic too. I'd be like, but when you're doing it raw, you got to be careful. I know it overpowers everything. This is really good. I have to stop eating it, so I'm not rude. Okay, Lauren, does the uh, Vitamix warm warm the soup? I know you generally do raw, but is that warm right there? What you've got, or is that this is room temperature? Um, but there is a soup setting on my Vitamix and all it really does is it spins it around and integrates it probably at a medium speed and then puts it up at a high speed 10 um, for about four, four and a half minutes. And if I let it go for a full four and a half minutes, it's actually steaming hot when I remove the lid. So at that point it's pretty much cooked, so to speak, um, but it will warm it. You don't need to use, um, a Vitamix though, I've used other blenders and it's just the heat of the blade. So the longer you blend it on high, you can actually just feel it on the side of the, uh, the blender and, and it'll, you'll know if it's warm. So it's just kind of a way to do it. Looks amazing. How long have you been raw? Thank you. Um, good question. So I was raw for about a year, um, a few years back, back in like 2017, 2018. Um, and then I kind of just brushed it to the side for a little while because I received some, some medical advice from an acupuncturist who, who told me that I shouldn't be raw because it was doing certain things or straining my body in certain ways. So I followed the advice of this particular health professional. And so what ended up happening was because I wasn't raw, then I went back to eating all of the processed vegan foods that um, were really, there are more processed vegan foods than they, that ever existed when I first went vegan. Oh, I'm, I have been vegan for almost 11 years. So back then, and it wasn't that long ago, it was like the only processed vegan food I could probably buy was hummus or tofu. That was it. I had to make everything else from scratch. So it was kind of healthier then than I was just a few years ago. But anyway, long story short, when COVID happened, I listened to an interview uh, with Matthew Grace and the owner of Catch a Healthy Habit Cafe in, in Fairfield, Matthew. Connecticut. What's his, what's the owner's name, Alan? Do you know his oh, name? Oh, Glenn, Glenn Colella. Glenn. Okay. So I listened to this interview and then I bought the book by Matthew Grace called A 
way out. And I read this book. book. It's amazing. Amazing. And it convinced me that by putting more oxygen in my body, it actually keeps away viruses like COVID because COVID survives in an environment with most viruses survive in an environment without oxygen. So oxygenating foods are actually raw foods. And it clicked. And I said, you know what? We're in COVID now. I'm going to push to the side that that professional advice. And I'm going to take my own advice. And I've been raw now uh since probably about a year uh since covid happened and i feel like it's really it's really working for me good question though matthew grace is he's he's an amazing guy yeah really yeah he he spoke in here at the school really a long long time ago yeah i had him speak here once oh my god if you ever get him back that would be that would be amazing he's amazing yeah he's really really knowledgeable yeah yeah so I guess I never realized how many processed foods were, were in the quote unquote health food store. And my funny story is like years and years ago, when I first wanted to start, start to explore to not eat the standard American diet, I went to the health food store and I bought their version of Cheetos. I don't couldn't tell you what brand it was. Well, it's got to be healthy because it came from the health food store and I ate the whole bag. But yep. I didn't know. I, I thought that if it came from the health food store, it had to be healthy. And yep. if you pick up that bag and you read that list of ingredients. Yeah. yeah it's not. <laughs> yeah. You know, a lot, a lot, Andrea, that's a good point. A lot of um, vegan products are marketed, almost marketed up, meaning that they'll put labels on certain things to make you feel like you're eating something healthy. It's organic, uh, no GMO, um, all gluten, natural gluten flavor. Free. Gluten, gluten free. free. <laughs> gluten free. Right. Um, but unfortunately, what we need to do is while I listen, people in transition go for those things, because if it's a difference between having a vegan hot dog or a real hot dog, please eat a vegan hot dog. OK, um, that I mean, this is what we're talking about. And we've been talking about this for, for years now, with the ethical culture, society and ethical eating. Um, if that's your transition, please go for it. But just be aware that you want to make sure that that's just a treat and you want to have as many natural foods as possible. Whether you're a vegan or not, I always tell people, make sure you have one full green smoothie. <laughs> a day, lots of greens, like half a pound of greens in there and one gigantic green salad. If you can just start with that, that's a a really good start. And then slowly start to to remove some of those animal products from your diet. Yeah. Um, During this, during this time, I've relied on some frozen, not, not so much the faux vegan stuff but just frozen in general because I wasn't shopping enough you know I wasn't going out or I'd get an order or somebody would pick up something for me so uh, I had mixed feelings about it but you know sometimes the convenience was very helpful what's what's the what's the conflict why are you um why are you trying to stay away from frozen um because it is processed I mean I think fresh is better but I think it's um I think it's okay. You know, you. Yeah, I think um, for the most part, if you're talking about frozen vegetables, they're typically blanched. So they are um, like uh, thrown into like hot boiling water for just like a second or like a 30 seconds or so, and then taken out and frozen, flash frozen from there. Um, I hear you on that though. From the beginning, I've always just used frozen berries, frozen fruit. My, most of my vegetables, I don't use any frozen broccoli or anything like that. I have cheated and I've had frozen peas because I like to put them in um, my noodle dishes and in my soup dishes as well. Uh, but for the most part, I try to stay away from frozen vegetables. I do use frozen fruits because where are you going to find stra- uh, strawberries and blueberries right now? That's, that's like my, my staple breakfast right there. So I do have, I do have frozen berries in my diet. Um, but I would rather have fresh. Hopefully that's only a couple, a month and a half away or so. So, Are you still um, dehydrating much? It's a good question. I think I dehydrate. Um, go through like phases. I remember I would go through a phase. Yeah. Know. Yeah. You know, I, I like to use my dehydrator to warm things. So for example, there's no, my husband's not going to eat this. Okay. It's going to be me. And I know that I'm not going to be able to eat all of this today. So I'll put it in a glass dish and I'll put it in my refrigerator or, you know, we talked about freezer too. I will let it defrost probably in my refrigerator um, or leave it in my refrigerator and then warm it in my dehydrator. So my dehydrator has become like my stove or my oven, so to speak. Not too, um, not too hot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do like to make um, like 
special occasion foods. I like, uh, I make cinnamon buns, I make uh, cookies, I've even made raw pancakes in my dehydrator, but I don't really feel so great when I eat those heavy, fatty, dehydrated foods. Um, you know, in this whole, this whole uh, blender full of um, butternut squash soup, probably each serving has almost a quarter cup of approximately an eighth to a quarter cup of um, almonds. Okay. And that's, and that's okay. But I have to be careful because I find that even just the fat from the seeds and the nuts, I don't have my full energy. And so I like to eat a lot of fruits. I like to eat a lot of leafy greens. I feel like I get a lot of my energy from those things. That's perfect. I'm, I'm sorry to say I have to run. <laughs> it's but, okay. Um, fantastic. And thank you. Eric, Eric, thank you for hosting. But um, yeah, Lauren, great stuff. Thank you. Glad you could make it, Alan. Yeah, By the way, yeah, Sylvia yeah. is 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 also hosting because she's the she's the chair oh, of the lifelong learning. So let's you give Sylvia some awesome. and thank credit you. here too. Thank everybody, but yeah, I'll definitely be back. Thank Super. you. All be right. well. Or else I'll see you at the next dance party. <laughs> Orin, can you give an example of your green smoothie? I do something like an energy soup that I learned at Ann Wigmore. But what would be an example of your green smoothie? Okay. Uh, all right. That's a good question. So my, my green smoothie is typically, uh, since we're in my kitchen, I, I usually do a, a cup of organic berry blends. Uh, you know, or if I have strawberry, I'll have, I don't know. I can't find strawberry anywhere these days. I don't know what it is. It's okay though. So a, a blend of berries, um, I'll use maybe one or two bananas, okay? Um, greens, I usually put in uh, either romaine or I buy Olivia's Organics blend. And mm -hmm. honestly, I'll, this, is a, uh, this is 11 ounces. I'll probably use half of this in my green smoothie. Water, stuff. If it's post-workout, I do use a protein supplement. Um, I know back in January when we first did this class, I did, well, this group, I did show you a homemade protein powder, which you can make out of ground flax, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds. So we did that mix and I added a little bit of cacao to that. Um, but when I want a shortcut, I buy, this is the only brand of protein powder that I like and that I trust. Maybe because it's not made in the U.S. Oh, wow, this is recorded. I should be careful. But in any case, um, I do love this brand. Um, it's called Vivo, Vivo Life, or this is Vivo Sport because it has um, some certain amino acids, BCAA amino acids in here. Um, and this is the vanilla flavor. So I will only do this after a really rigorous workout in the morning. Um, otherwise, I'll just have my fruits and my, my greens. Uh, and I like to use a little bit of water. I like my smoothies like really thick. So I just use maybe a cup or a cup of a half of water and, and that's it. Okay. Pretty, yeah, pretty straightforward. Any other questions? No? Okay. Um, so I believe the first Sunday of April is actually a holiday um, this year. So I don't know if maybe Eric and Sylvia, if you wanted to talk about that now or maybe offline about when our next meeting might be. Um, so is that a conflict for you? If it's a conflict for you, then obviously we can adjust. Yeah, um, yeah, it, I'll, I'll be celebrating the holiday with my family, so. Super, okay, then we will, we'll, uh, we'll uh, confer and find uh, the Sunday to do it. Okay. Uh, either before or after. Great. Have okay. any idea of what you wanna do? For our next workshop? Yeah. Um, I don't know, I'm leaning toward Italian night, but. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we'll 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 get the particulars down. But thank you okay. uh, for yeah for letting us uh, know about that and for letting everybody who's on here give them a little bit of a heads up and an early warning. Sure. Uh, just to uh, uh, keep uh, keep connected, you can always um, find the details uh, by going on to. First of all, uh, I want to thank Lauren and say uh, again another thank great, you, informative, really thank you. useful, and fun. 
uh, session here. Um, Thank you, Lauren. And sure. so you so folks, you can find information at ethicalfocus.org. Uh, this is a, a program of the Ethical Culture Society of Bergen County uh, of our um, uh, ethical enrichment programs. And so if you want, you can get on our mailing list at theethicalfocus.org, and then you'll get a weekly announcements that will have all of the updates of all the things that we have going on uh, at the Ethical Culture Society. I will also say, if you go to ethicalfocus.org, you'll find a donate button there if you wanna make a donation to help offset uh, the costs of the programs and help us continue our uh, ongoing work at making the world more healthy and humane. And, um, and uh, so uh, with that said, I will again, just give thanks to Lauren. People, you know, we're welcome to stick around and chat if you want, uh, and uh, we'll keep it open for a little bit longer. Um, and uh, great. I'm Lauren, gonna head thanks. out. Thank you, you guys. I, I really appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Good thanks to see you, me. Andrea. Yeah. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. It was really excellent. Thank you for all your uh, suggestions and programs. Sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you Thanks so much, Lauren. I copied the chat because I think that's where you had your, your um, blog. Is that the name of the blog? Um, yeah, lcoconsulting.co. That's the name of my website. And okay. My first ever blog post will be these recipes. So awesome. I'll, I'll include that this week. So great. Please refer to that from now on. Great. Thank you so much. Good. Looking forward to it. I And I've got all of these on all these that are recorded. I finally have like enough Dropbox space that I can send them over to Terry. We'll get them posted and oh, I can great. send them over to you too, Lauren. Super. That's great. Thank you. All right. All okay. right. Thank Very you. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day.